Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So today's case is still a very ongoing case, which is just a few months past the one year mark of her disappearance. This is a case that is relying on somebody coming forward with what they know, and that is why I am making this video. I want to share Trina's story as far and as wide as I can, and right off the bat, I want to direct you to the website that Trina's family has made for her disappearance, trinahunt.com. This is where I got most of the information for the timeline and where you can go to stay the most up to date with the case. So with that being said, let's just get right into the details of this case. Trina Hunt was 48 years old, living in the Heritage Mountain neighborhood of Port Moody, British Columbia in Canada when she went missing on January 18th, 2021. She was described by family as being an amazing woman who was incredibly down to earth and had a heart of gold. She was known to have a bubbly, bright, welcoming, caring, compassionate, generous, and loyal personality. She had worked at Shaw Communications, which is a telecommunications company that provides telephone, internet, TV, and mobile services. But she was actually able to take an early retirement, which is pretty cool, at the age of 48. However, even though she left her work, she was still so loved by her coworkers, so they made sure to stay in contact with her even after she left her job. Trina was married to a man named Ian Hunt, who worked as a CEO at Clean Tech Service Group from Richmond, British Columbia. So I don't know too much more about Trina, unfortunately, but what I can tell is that she is so, so very loved by her friends, her family, and her community. Like I said, her family has set up an entire website just to share information about Trina case and the timeline. This is where you will find the most accurate information. It's been double checked and made sure that everything is 100% accurate. So in terms of accuracy and the most up-to-date information, that is where you will find it, like I said earlier. So with that being said, I used her website as well as different articles that I could find to piece together this information in the best way that I possibly could. So on Saturday, January 16th of 2021, Trina's husband, Ian, reported that the two of them drove down to Hope, British Columbia for the day to visit a campground that they used to go to when they were younger in their 20s. The two of them were known for going on long drives and visiting different places such as a dairy farm. But right off the bat, the strange thing about this was that January 16th was absolutely freezing, as you can imagine, in Canada. It was a high of 7 degrees Celsius and a low of 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. This was just over an hour and a half drive, and they took Ian's gray BMW rear-wheel drive to this campsite. But the weird thing about this was that they normally used Trina's much larger all-wheel drive Mercedes SUV to go on these road trips. Ian said that the two only visited the campsite for about a day before returning home sometime that evening. He said that he didn't know exactly when they got home, but they did get in home in time to watch a movie that night. When Ian is asked about what the two did that Saturday, his answers have always been really vague and he hasn't really given out much information about what they did, including to Trina's family. So to this day, no one really knows exactly what they did on that day. So now going back just a bit in the timeline, on January 14th, Trina was seen on CCTV footage in the retail community. Then on January 15th, she had been texting back and forth with a friend who lived in Ottawa, Canada. In this conversation, the two were discussing setting up some sort of a virtual cocktail date together. That was the last time that it had been confirmed that anybody had actually heard from Trina. So now jumping back forward in the timeline, back Back to January 16th, the day that the two apparently went to this campsite, a coworker had texted Trina two times without getting a response that day. But then on Sunday, January 17th, just before 5 p.m., Trina's phone responded to her former coworker saying, delayed response because I'm trying a digital detox this weekend. Haven't touched the phone all weekend. And then Ian backed this up, saying that they were both doing a digital detox on the weekend that they went to this campsite. Ian further explained to the family that they basically just needed a break from COVID and Trump on the news, so they both decided to just take a weekend away from their phones. So this definitely seems reasonable, but the things that happened after this make this a little bit strange that they decided to take this digital detox on this specific weekend. So the former coworker ended up responding to this text message with, wow, good for you, must be so much harder to be stuck at home. Then a few hours later after this, Trina's phone responded, amen. However, the family was a little bit off-put by these text messages. 
They were not in the normal style of writing that Trina typically used. She typically used a lot of emotion and emojis, both of which were not present in these text messages. She also was never known to use the phrase amen when replying to things, so this was very out of character for Trina and not really something that she would ever say. Trina's cousin says that she believes it's possible that these messages were not sent by Trina. Then that same weekend, Trina's family was a little bit taken back by something that Ian posted on his Pinterest board. It was a picture of a little girl flipping off the camera and it read, sorry, if I offended you, but maybe you needed to be offended. Here's my apology. And one more thing, F you. Now looking at Ayn's Pinterest board, it really looks like he's mostly just into fashion and food and travel and things like that. So to me, this being on his Pinterest board seemed pretty out of place. He seemed to have a certain aesthetic that he liked. So I'm sure this is why it stood out to the family as being really weird. It seemed really random and out of place and it almost felt like sort of a message to them. By Monday, January 18th, Ian left for work at around 6 a.m., citing that he had seen Trina that morning. All day, there was no activity on Trina's phone or her laptop. Then at 1 p.m., she had a telephone appointment scheduled, but she missed it without any explanation or warning, which was very out of character for Trina. By 4.30 p.m., Ayn returned home from work to find that Trina's wallet, keys, phone, and car were all at home, but Trina was nowhere to be found. Right away, Ayn called police to report Trina as missing. When police arrived, they noted that the front door was unlocked and there was no sign of forced entry or a struggle within the home. Police also noted that the house's security system had not been turned on. When he was asked about this, Ian said that he did not set the security system the night before, so Sunday night, because he was leaving for work early that Monday and he didn't want to wake Trina up. However, the family's website explains that turning on the system does not cause any sort of continuous beeping or any sort of noise that would wake Trina up when he left. This has never been something that he worried about in the past either. Trina was a stickler about having the security system on and having all of the windows and doors shut at night. So again, this entire situation was just very strange and it simply was not adding up. There was no reason for that security system to be turned off and no one really knew the real reason why he had never turned it on. So of course, everybody was really worried that Trina was missing. Nobody knew what could have happened to her but because there was no sign of forced entry or any sort of a struggle. The thought was that maybe Trina just decided to up and leave her life, but her family came back with that and said that there was absolutely no reason that she would want to get up and leave her life. She was recently retired and was so, so excited to see what she was going to do with her retirement. She was only 48 years old. She had such a long time to just enjoy herself. She was still so young and had so much energy to travel and do whatever she wanted with her retirement. So that was something that she was really looking forward to. She had no financial issues, no marital issues, no mental health issues, or anything else that the family knew about that would lead them to believe that she wanted to up and leave her life. And again, her cousin noted that the fact that she had this digital detox the weekend before she went missing is very, very strange. So the same day that she went missing on January 18th, the Port Moody police started canvassing the area and was asking surrounding houses and businesses for their security footage. They also brought in sniffer dogs to search around the home, but there was no scent that was picked up. By that next day, police started their ground search. They got search and rescue teams involved and had numerous volunteers that set out to help search for Trina. The community really came together to help find Trina. Police got a helicopter as well and a canine unit involved and half a dozen officers were on the case all trying to figure out where Trina went. For the following weeks, search and rescue teams continued to search the surrounding areas for any sign of Trina. The Port Moody police released a statement saying, quote, numerous investigative resources have been utilized in our search for Trina, including RCMP Air Services, Search and Rescue, the Vancouver Police Marine Unit, and Lower Mainland Integrated Police Dog Service. Going on to say, we have also contacted our partners at the Integrated Homicide Investigation Team, IHI 
MIT as a part of that team's mandate to investigate suspicious missing persons cases where foul play is suspected. At this time, evidence indicates that this missing persons case does not meet IHIT's mandate. But then the following day, they followed up by stating, quote, We've come to the conclusion that IHIT can no longer continue to assist us because we don't have any evidence of foul play. Our minds are open, absolutely, to all possibilities. And then they went on to say, we have a lot of people on this case over the last month. We called out our major crime section initially the very first day. We believed it was serious enough to call our higher trained detectives. When asked about his confidence that this will actually be solved, he said, I'm confident that we are going to make some inroads. By Monday, March 1st, the family held a large banner at a major overpass in Port Moody to spread awareness about Trina's disappearance. Ian did not attend this, but he did release a statement saying, quote, the past six Six weeks since Trina's disappearance have been a devastating and incredibly difficult time for me and everybody who knows my wife. I feel the same frustration and incomprehension that her parents, family, and friends share in not knowing what happened to Trina. I am confident that the police are doing all they can to solve this case, and I am hopeful that they will bring Trina home. By March 10th, Ian's employment as being CEO of Clean Tech Services Group was terminated for unknown reasons. Ian said that he was just taking a sabbatical, but the Clean Tech website got rid of any picture of him and any mention of him on their website and all their social media platforms. So this is just another thing that was really weird in this case, something that we don't really know why it happened or truly what happened behind the scenes. All we know is that, you know, he stopped working at Clean Tech Services Group for whatever reason, and they didn't really want to be associated with him anymore. Then by 10 a.m. on the morning of Monday, March 29th, after three and a half months of endless searches, human remains were found in Hope, British Columbia. Initially, these remains were not identified. However, that same day on March 29th, Ian left the home that he lived in with Trina and moved in with his parents in Mission, British Columbia. So at this point, I'm not sure if Ian knew about these remains being found or if it was sort of just a coincidence. I don't imagine that this information was released that quickly. I don't know that they would have found them and then they released that information that same day or if March 29th is just the day that they announced that they found human remains in hope. I'm not totally sure on that, but it very well could have. He could have found out that the remains were found and then chose to move, or they could have found them that day, hadn't yet said anything because they just found them, and it just happened to be a coincidence that he moved in with his parents that same day. So again, I do want to be fair in this case. I'm just reporting the facts, just saying what we know. Obviously, it is a little bit of a weird coincidence, and I don't really believe in coincidences all that much, but again, I do want to be fair. But what we do know is that by April 27th, neighbors said that they spotted Ian moving back into the home that he once shared with Trina, so he was away for about a month. It wasn't until May 1st that the human remains found in Hope, British Columbia were in fact confirmed as belonging to that of Trina Hunt. These remains were found in the same area that Ian said that they had just been two days before Trina went missing. At this point, the Port Moody police announced that this is now a homicide case and foul play is suspected. They stated that they cannot give out exact information as to where she was found because they are relying on people coming forward with information. So basically they're saying that they don't want to release too much information because that way they can figure out how accurate a tip is based off of how much information they know that hasn't been released to the public. So as we all know, when they get their suspect or when they're questioning someone, they look for them to admit things that was not released to the public. So that's kind of what they're doing here. But what they did say was that when they found her remains, the way she was found did suggest criminality. Of course, after hearing this news, Trina's family and her community were absolutely crushed. Any hope of her still being out there somewhere is now gone. People started showing up to her house to leave flowers and made a vigil. Everyone was devastated and desperately wanted answers for Trina's senseless death. By June 1st, Trina's family announced a $50,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest and charges for Trina's murderer. By June 5th, the IHIT and Port Mooney police executed search warrants at both Trina's home and Ian's parents' home where he had been living for much of the time of Trina's disappearance. Police also took both Trina's Mercedes SUV from Ian's parents' home 
and Ayn's gray BMW from Trina's home to investigate them. However, after this, there has not been any information released about what they found, if anything. So after this, we don't know much of anything else. Like I said, a lot of the information from the timeline came directly from Trina's website, which will be linked down below. At this point, police are relying on tips and information from the public to try and solve Trina's murder. They want to know if anyone saw or heard anything suspicious on the day of January 16th, or if they saw anything in their neighborhood, or if they saw anything in Hope where her remains were found. Her family has come out with the following statement. We know someone out there knows something or has heard something. Are you suspicious of someone or are you protecting someone? We need you to come forward. We need you to be Trina's voice. Please, we beg of you to do the right thing and put an end to this unnecessary suffering. Our final message is for the person who did this to Trina. You need to come forward and take responsibility for what you did. You have senselessly taken Trina's life and ruined so many others. Own up to your actions and accept the consequences. It's the least you can do. We know you're out there and our family and our community will continue fighting for answers. And while painfully nothing will bring our Trina back, we will get justice for Trina. We promise. Trina and all women deserve nothing less. Trina's family is so desperate to solve her murder and I just genuinely hope by sharing her story, her information, and her picture, we might be able to help. Whether it be jogging someone's memory into remembering something that they saw that weekend or by adding pressure to whoever is responsible. Anyone with information is asked to contact the IHIT information line at one 551 ihit or 4448 or by email at ihitinfo at rcmp-grc.gc.ca. For this case, I won't go too much into theories because it seems kind of like the family has sort of steered away from that. They just want answers. Obviously, Ian's behaviors and this whole story is very suspicious and I don't like it. There have been vigils held for Trina that he didn't attend, and I'm honestly not sure if he was out searching for her or participating in any of the efforts to find her. But either way, I do think that he knows something and he's just not coming forward. He did tell the family that he took a polygraph test and passed, but again, I don't even know if this was ever confirmed. Whether something happened that he witnessed and is too afraid to come forward with it, whether he is directly responsible for harming her for whatever reason, he needs to come forward with what he knows. And that's all I'm really gonna say about that. Again, please make sure you just go ahead and check out the articles that I have listed below in addition to her website, especially her website, and just share the heck out of her story. If you take anything from this video, if you share anything from this video, I just ask that you share the website, trinahunt.com. Any and all updates will be there first and foremost. All information on her website is guaranteed to be 100% fact-checked and accurate so you can feel comfortable knowing that you are sharing the right information. I will be tracking her case and keeping everybody up to date with any information that comes out on my Twitter. But again, if you wanna follow this case, the best place to do so is on her website. Please just keep her family in your thoughts. Please do whatever you can to help bring justice for Trina. So with all of that, that is where I'm going to end today's video. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share this video to get all of the information about Trina's case out there as well as her website, like I said. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That is where I keep the most up to date with any information that comes out about cases, especially my Twitter. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send those suggestions over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.